Hey y'all, welcome to Kamira's Kitchen. Today we're making a delicious ribeye steak meal with mashed potatoes as well as some green beans. We're gonna be cooking this steak in the cast iron and it's going to come together quick and delicious. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I have one ribeye steak and I have allowed it to come to room temperature. Then I'm going to coat both sides with some avocado oil, but olive oil is just fine. Now this is necessary to help our spices stay and today I'm using this Chicago steak seasoning. I actually haven't used this before, but I really wanted to give it a go and I ended up liking it. If you like Montreal steak seasoning, you can use that, but you could also simply use a mixture of salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and rosemary. And that's a classic combination for a steak. It's a little controversial, but I am also using a little bit of accent, otherwise known as MSG, because I do believe it enhances the flavor of your steaks. Now, of course, you're going to season both sides and you need to really press the spices in to the crevices of the steak because one issue you will often have with steak is that the spices will fall off. And then I'm just going to dab the excess spices onto the side of the steak. Now, for these mashed potatoes, okay, I know you're thinking, why she got a cauliflower? Is she making mashed potatoes? Okay, look, I hear you, but honestly, regular mashed potatoes can be a little heavy for me on a regular weeknight, so I tend to actually do half cauliflower, half potatoes. It lightens it up for me, and honestly, if you are not used to doing this or you've never tried this, give it a go because it really can just lighten up the meal but having the potatoes in there gives you that same starchy texture that you are looking for. Of course, this is optional. So if you don't want to do this, then simply just double the amount of potatoes that I have here and follow the same steps. Now, one of the ways of fooling people into thinking this is all potatoes is leaving some of the skin in the mashed potatoes. So I'm just going to cut off the eyes, but the rest of the skin I'm going to use um, because, hey, guess what? You know, if you see that there's skin in the potatoes, okay, obviously it got to be potatoes and not cauliflower. <laughs> so I'm going to cut them up into uh, bite-sized pieces, one inch one to two inch pieces and then i'm going to set them aside and i have some water in this water i'm putting a teaspoon of chicken bouillon and a teaspoon of salt and i'm just going to place in the potatoes and the cauliflower and allow this to cook for about 20 minutes until the cauliflower and the potatoes are very soft now at the end of the cooking time, about the last five minutes, I'm gonna put in some frozen green beans, but I'm not gonna stir them in. Just let them sit and defrost, and that way it's gonna be easy to fish them out. While this is going, I have had my cast iron skillet heating, and it's smoking at a medium high temperature. I'm gonna put my avocado oil in, and then I'm gonna place in my steak. My steak has been sitting for about 20 minutes with the spices. It's best to do it overnight, but I didn't have that time. To prevent the steak from buckling, go in there with your scissors and just cut the fat a little bit. You're not cutting it off, you're just cutting nicks into it. I'm sure you guys have seen that sometimes ribeye steaks or steaks can buckle and that's because the fat is um, you know, melting and there's becoming a little tension on there. So just cut those and you won't have that problem as you can see. My steak has been cooking for about five minutes on that side. It has a nice crust, and so now I'm going in with this garlic butter, herb butter. If you don't have this, then I'm gonna leave a link to my recipe for garlic herb butter, or you can just put in about three tablespoons of butter and some rosemary and some thyme and one clove of garlic whole. That will work too. And I'm gonna stick in um, a sprig of dried rosemary and begin to spoon this over the steak. I'm cooking for about five minutes on this side. Now, I like my steak to be kind of well done, just a little bit of pink, all right? So if you want yours to be more rare, then I would increase the heat and only cook for about three minutes on each side. It's been five minutes now and my green beans are nice and defrosted, so I'm gonna take them out. And remember, since I didn't mix them up, they're very easy to spoon off. Then I'm going to just go in and drain off my cauliflower and potatoes. And as you will see, the texture of the cauliflower is really soft. So this will be super easy to mash. I allowed this to dry for about 10 minutes so there would be no extra water. And then I went in with two tablespoons of butter and some sour cream and salt and pepper to taste. 
for this particular recipe if you're using cauliflower things like milk or heavy cream would not be a good choice because the cauliflower is retaining a little bit of water so that will give plenty enough liquid for you if you are using all potatoes you can maybe put in a dab of heavy cream but honestly i think sour cream gives the best texture I just went in with some beaters and I just beat the cauliflower and potatoes until they got the texture that I liked. It only took about one minute on a medium speed of my beaters and my cauliflower mash was absolutely delicious. You would never know that there was cauliflower in there. I promise. Okay. So let's go ahead and slice up your ribeye. It has been sitting for about seven minutes, just allowing it to rest because you don't want those juices to all just come pouring out of the steak. And this is how my meat looks. You see, there's just a little bit of band of pink, but it's really not bloody. And that's how I like it. Okay. In this case today, you know, I wanted my, you know, I didn't want no cow in, in the steak. Okay. I didn't want no cow. I didn't want to be mooing at me. But if you want that, you can turn your pan up to a higher temperature and then just cook it for about three minutes on each side. This is my meal all plated up. I put the juices from the steak all over my mash. It was so good. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for weekly recipes. God bless you and I'll see you next time in Kamira's Kitchen. Goodbye.